Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about chiral atoms and chiral molecules. I'm also going to talk about the bane of all students, mesa compounds. So make sure you stick till the very end and work through the examples with me. So first of all, a definition. A chiral object is an object that has a non-superimposable mirror image. It can be anything from macro object, such as a garden snail shell or your hands, to a micro object like a molecule or even an atom. So just like your hands, molecules can be chiral too. So for instance, let's look at these two structures. I have R2-butanol and I have S2-butanol. I talked about assigning R and S stereo descriptors in my other video, so if you haven't seen that one yet, check that one out. So these two molecules are mirror images of each other, yet it is impossible to make one of them look exactly like the other one in three dimensions without physically breaking bonds and reassembling the molecule anew. If a molecule is chiral, it means that it has an enantiomer, and the fact that two molecules are enantiomers means that they are non-superimposable mere reflections of each other. So these two definitions are very similar to each other, However, if a molecule is chiral, it describes the molecule itself. If molecules, plural, are enantiomers, it describes the relationship between those two molecules. So here is something very important, the very important distinction that we are going to make. The entire molecule can be chiral, or just an atom in a molecule can be chiral. So what exactly makes atom chiral? If an atom has four different groups, so we need to have four groups, if we have four different groups attached to that atom, we can call that atom chiral, for as long as the atom is sp3 hybridized, of course. And notice that it doesn't have to be a carbon atom at all. Other atoms like nitrogen, sulfur, or phosphorus, let's say, can be chiral as well. So let's look at an example here. I have a molecule that looks like that, ethyl. In this molecule, I do have a chiral atom right over here. So let me explain. Let's redraw this molecule as a full Lewis structure. I have CH3, CH2, then C, H, S, H, and another CH3. So my chiral atom, this one, is on one side going to be connected to this ethyl group, then on the other side it is connected to methyl group, then we also have the thiol group, and on top of all of that we have a hydrogen. So we have four different groups around my chiral carbon. And here is something very important. You have to analyze the entire group and not just the first atom attached to your carbon of interest or your atom of interest. In this example, I have the pink group and the green group. They are both carbon-containing groups. The ethyl group starts with a carbon, the methyl group starts with a carbon as well. However, they are different groups. If you are only looking at the very first atom connected to my carbon, well, that would be a carbon versus carbon, so seemingly no difference. So make sure you are analyzing the entire group rather than just the first atom. Let me give you a couple more examples here. Can you find any chiral carbons in this molecule? So if I look at my first carbon over here, that carbon is connected to three hydrogen atoms, so we do not have four different groups. The next one is connected to two hydrogens and some other stuff, so again, no four different groups. The next one has hydrogen and two carbon-containing groups, but not four groups. Then, the next carbon over here, again, only three groups, the next carbon only three groups, the next carbon, that one has a couple of hydrogens sitting on that, so again, no four groups, however, the next carbon that I have over here, well, that carbon is connected to a methyl group, it is also connected to an OH, it is connected to a propyl group over here, and it is connected to the rest of the molecule on the left side. So in this case, we do have four different groups connected to that particular carbon. That makes this carbon a chiral carbon. How about this molecule? 
Do you see a chiral carbon here? I'll give you a hint. The chiral carbon is going to be right there. So let's analyze that. First, I have to make sure to note any implicit hydrogens that I might have, and I do have an implicit hydrogen right over here. So I will assign that as my first group. So this is my first unique group. Then I have this group containing the nitrogen. Then I have the two sides of the ring. So if I look very closely, the bottom side of the ring and the top side of the ring, they are not the same. If I look at that atom by atom, my carbon of interest over here is connected to hydrogen. Then we have CH2 and H2. Then when it comes to the ring part, the green part of the ring is C, H, then a double bond to another carbon. However, the pink part of my ring is going to be C, H, 2, which is then connected to another carbon. So I do have a difference in those groups, which means that my carbon of interest, the one that I showed at the very beginning, that one is in fact going to be a chiral carbon. So whenever you are doing your analysis, always pay very close attention to implicit hydrogens, like what I have in this example. And although the implicit hydrogens are not shown, they are still there, so you must count them as a group when determining your molecule, uh, whether it's chiral or not, so keep that in mind. Also, do not stop at just the first atom or the first part of the group. Keep on analyzing your group until you find the difference or the group ends. If you have a cycle, keep on following the cycle, keep on following the chain until you find the difference. And if you do not find any difference, well, in that case, both sides of your uh, cycle are going to be the same, so that means that that atom uh, which is connected to that cycle cannot be chiral. So does the presence of chiral atoms automatically means that the molecule is chiral? And actually, no. So we remember that chiral molecules must be non-superimposable with its own mirror image. You can have a situation where the molecule does have chiral atoms, yet the molecule itself is superimposable with its own mirror image. That makes it achiral or non-chiral. Such molecules are called mesocompounds. Let me give you an example. Here, in this molecule, I do have two chiral atoms. I have a chiral atom over here and I have a chiral atom over here. However, if I were to take this molecule and make a mirror image of this molecule, so let's say this is going to be my plane of mirror and I will reflect this molecule on the other side, what I'm going to end up with is going to be a molecule that looks like that. Clearly, you can see that if I were to take this molecule and rotate around the axis, which is just our uh, plane of paper here, we are going to get exactly the same molecule, which means that this molecule is superimposable with the original, which means that, well, they are not enantiomers. And if molecule is superimposable with its own mirror image, it means that that molecule is not chiral, or in other words, it is a chiral. Since this molecule does have chiral carbons, we are going to call it a mesocompound. So remember that mesocompounds are always a chiral. All mesocompounds are a chiral molecules. However, not all a chiral molecules are mesocompounds. So in other words, you can think about the entire realm of a chiral molecules. So this is my entire realm of achiral molecules. And inside of this realm, I have sub-realm of mesocompounds. Those are a subclass of achiral molecules. So in other words, mesocompound is a subtype of achiral molecules. So notice that a mesocompound is a characteristic of a molecule, and it is not a relationship between the molecules. So I cannot say that these two, the relationship between them is mesocompound. No, mesocompound is the characteristic of the molecule itself, and the relationship will be that they are identical. So remember, there are only two relationships between stereoisomers. Stereoisomers can be either enantiomers or diastereomers. Or, of course, if it is the same molecule, we are going to say that this is the identical molecule or the same compound. 
you cannot say that uh, the relationship is meso because, as I said, meso is just the characteristics of the molecule itself. Here is another example. In this molecule, I do have two chiral atoms as well. I have a chiral atom over here and I have a chiral atom over here. Now, this molecule, if I were to make a mirror reflection of that, let's say this is my plane of mirror, then what I'm going to end up with is going to be a molecule that looks like this. In this case, it is a little bit more difficult to uh, make it into the original one, but still not impossible. What I'll have to do, I'll just have to take the form that I have on the right and I will have to rotate it around the axis, around the horizontal axis. If I do so, then I'm going to end up with the original molecule, which means that this is also a meso compound, and as all meso compounds, this molecule is also a chiral. Now, here is one other thing that you might want to notice about the meso compounds. Meso compounds have a plane of symmetry. However, that plane of symmetry may or may not be apparent in every single conformation of the molecule. So if I look at my top molecule, that one has an obvious plane of symmetry, just like that. The bottom one, however, while it is a meso compound, we don't really see any plane of symmetry. And in order to make a plane of symmetry, in order to see that plane of symmetry, what we'd have to do, we would have to rotate this molecule around the middle bond like that, while in this case, what I will end up with is going to be a conformation that looks like this. Left side of the molecule will stay unchanged, while the right side rotates in space, and now both of my chlorines are looking at me. And in this case, I, in fact, do have my plane of symmetry. And here is one other important thing that I want to point out when it comes to planes of symmetry. The molecule will only have a plane of symmetry if molecule looks sort of like a butterfly or an ink blot, if you like. If I have a molecule that looks, let's say, like this, I have an OH group here, and then I have another OH group on the left side. This molecule has a clear plane of symmetry going through the middle of it, so it is fully symmetrical. We do have a couple of chiral carbons over there, so that would be another example of a meso compound. However, if I were to draw something like that, there is no plane of symmetry in that molecule, because no matter how I cut this molecule, the both cuts, the both sides of this molecule will not be the same. If I cut the molecule like this, I cannot fold it onto itself. If I cut it like that, well, same deal, it doesn't fold onto itself. If I cut it, let's say, like this, again, it doesn't fold onto itself. So no matter how much I try, how many attempts I have, this molecule will never fold onto itself, making nice butterfly wings or an ink blot, so this molecule does not have a plane of symmetry. And because of that, this would be a just a regular chiral molecule, because we do have some chiral atoms, and if we were to draw a mirror image of that, it will be non-superimposable with its own mirror image. Well, all this theory is awesome, but how about we look at some examples? So here is my first molecule. Pause this video, copy it down, find any chiral atoms that we, that we might have, and determine if this molecule is chiral or not. All right, so this molecule is chiral, and I know this because if I look at this molecule carefully, I will see that the central carbon, I will redraw this molecule on the side so I don't uh, put too much stuff on my original picture, we do have four different groups around my central atom, like this. I do have the oxygen, I have the hydrogen, I have the carboxylic acid group, and I have the alkene on the other side. So I have four different groups around my central atom, so that is going to be a chiral atom, and if your molecule only has one chiral atom, it will be chiral as well, and it will be non-superimposable with its own mirror image, so you will be able to draw an enantiomer for that molecule. All right, how about this one? This one is also chiral, so I will say that this is 
also a chiral molecule. And in this case, we do have two chiral atoms. I have one chiral atom over here and another chiral atom over here. Remember that when we have rings like that, you got to follow the ring until either you have no difference or you will find your first difference. And if you look carefully atom by atom, you will see that those uh, two carbons have four different groups. So I will do just the top one, for example. So on top, I have carbon connected to carbon, CH3, which is connected to CH2, which is connected to CH2 on the left, which is connected to C on the bottom. So right now, not too much difference. My group on the right is connected to CH2, while my group on the left is connected to CH, which has a double bond, and my group on the bottom is connected to oxygen, carbon, and another carbon. So at this point, I can see that I clearly have a CH3 group, then I have this side of the ring, I have the other side of the ring, and I have the bottom group that is different from everything else in this molecule. So the top carbon has four different groups, therefore it's going to be chiral. I can do the same analysis for the bottom one, and I challenge you to actually do that analysis on your piece of paper, and maybe draw a mirror image of this molecule and see how that looks like. All right, how about this one? This molecule does have two chiral carbons, so I have chiral carbon at each of my chlorines, However, this molecule also has a plane of symmetry, which means that it can fold onto itself like wings of butterfly or an ink blot, which means that that one is going to be an example of a meso compound, and all meso compounds are a chiral. So that is going to be an achiral molecule. And let's do just one more. How about this one? This molecule does not have any chiral carbons because we do have plane of symmetry cutting the molecule right in the middle, which means that my right side of the cycle and my left side of the cycle are absolutely identical. Because of that, we do not have any chiral atoms, and if we don't have any chiral atoms, that one is going to be just a regular achiral molecule but that is not a meso compound, just a regular achiral one. Well, if you want more practice questions or want to learn about other organic chemistry topics, go check out organicchemistrytutor.com, hit that like button if you found this video helpful, drop your questions and feedback in the comments below, and I'll see you next time!